We decided to kick it up a notch with a ball pit. Yahoo! Yahoo is right. Let's rock. Who doesn't love a good trash fire? There's no better way to keep warm during those long winter months than by huddling up close and watching the combustion take place before you. And conventions, well, they fit the bill. Now, there are a myriad of them for almost every subject you could imagine. They come and go all year round. And every once in a while, once in a, a blue moon, you'll come across a convention that devolves into complete and utter madness. And that insanity could include a whole host of things, from furries throwing shit-filled nappies onto people's Subarus, to fat tumblerettes swimming in piss-filled ball pits. But it takes a special kind of retard, I'm talking special ed levels of stupid, to fuck a convention up before it even begins. Typically, the convention actually has to happen first before it can devolve into a shit show. But that's not the case with Kilroy. The free speech event, everybody's been talking about it. All your favorite YouTubers are going to be there. It sounds like a fantastic idea, and for a while, it was a fantastic idea. Until the realization of what it was and what it would become started to fully hit people. The first cracks in the facade came from Tim Poole, when on December 11th, he tweeted this out to his followers. For those attending Kilroy in Phoenix this April, I am pulling out and will not be speaking any longer. Apologies to those looking to see me there. And he quickly followed this up with a, a little bit more of an explanation. They asked for a 16-month non-compete and a three-year NDA. They were willing to negotiate on the non-compete, but not the non-disclosure agreement. They cited safety reasons for the three-year NDA. Strange thing to ask, and I can't trust the reasoning for such an agreement. Now, Tim elaborated even more on this in a video he put up for the people that were coming to see him. I was asked to sign a 16-month non-compete agreement and a three-year non-disclosure agreement in order to participate in this event. I find those contracts very strange. I have a speaking agent. I have numerous contracts through United Talent. I speak at events all the time. In fact, this week in New York, I'm speaking at an event on technology. This is not standard. This is not normal. And I was not given an adequate reason as to why any of these provisions, any of these agreements were, were, were asked to be uh, signed. And Tim wasn't alone. Other people that were scheduled to speak said they had issues with the non-disclosure agreement as well. Things a farce. I mean, the majority of the headliners there, actually all of them have spoken in various locations before. Never in my life, I mean, I get, I've been given contracts, but I've never been given an NDA non-compete that spans several years um, to a 100 mile radius. I mean, that's, that's cuckoo banana cakes. Now, the big motivator for Tim as to why he put the tweets up and the video up was to explain to the people that might have pre-purchased tickets or donated money to come see him. He wanted to explain to them why he wasn't going to be there. People donated and were expecting to see me there. I'm obligated to inform them I will not be. People asked why I wasn't going, and I told them. I've kept a lot private here, but I'm willing to publish everything if people are not satisfied. Well, as it turns out, not everybody was completely satisfied. In particular, the organizer of the event. It isn't strange to ask. It's standard practice. I was clear that I'm not willing to risk the anonymity of dissidents whose lives are at risk for attending and speaking at Kilroy. Calling me out in public isn't going to compel me to bend on this. No one called you out. I'm obligated to inform people that thought I was going that I will no longer be there. But it gets stranger still. One of the featured speakers on the Kilroy page, an account called Harambe Desserts, had this to say, Tim Pool is not an ally to ex-Muslims, and he is going around bad-mouthing and lying about Based Mama, who is an ex-Muslim too. On that fact alone and his lies, he is despicable. Hate though, he is just a stupid ass. Not worth hating at all. I don't know about that. All I see is people mocking an NDA that protects ex-Muslims. I mean, how much of an ass butt do you need to be? I don't trust that dude, Tim Poole, as far as I can throw him. He obviously is shady and selfish as anything for making a big deal out of the NDA. I'm fairly certain Tim Poole doesn't know who he's fucking with. Neither did I when I responded to this insane bullshit calling him a bad ally for having issues with an NDA contract. Because I received this response. Dude is in for a rude awakening with us. Oh yes. Don't ever fuck with ex-Muslims. You will regret it. Don't fuck with us. You're gonna regret it. I wonder what she meant by that. You leave us alone, we'll leave you alone. You fuck our shit up, we'll fuck your shit up until you can't fuck our shit up anymore. I'm 
a former Muslim, a former extremist, a former terrorist supporter. Well, these sound like some stable and well-adjusted individuals. I'm sure I'm just misreading that playful tweet as a threat. I can do a whole lot better for threats if you want. It can be a game. Well, I do love video games, so I couldn't pass that challenge up. And it looks like it was answered. Because yesterday, when I put up a tweet promoting this video and what the topic would be on, all of the sudden, from out of nowhere, a complete and utter coincidence, videos started getting flagged on my channel. That's rather strange. It's almost like somebody was attempting to shut the channel down so this video couldn't go up. But why would they do that? What would motivate them to want to shut this particular video down? Oh, maybe it has to do with the fact that Based Mama was a part of Kraut Server, the server that was targeting people on the right side of politics. Could, could that have something to do with it? I mean, Based Mama was in there. She admits she was in there. I'm going to let you know right now. I got invited in, and then I just never left. And good old Halal Desserts here, well, she was uh, somewhat related to it as well. If you remember back when JF's video was flagged for playing audio that was leaked from the server Kraut had, she tweeted this out. I have no idea what I flagged. I hope it was real juicy. Ah ha 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 ha. So we have two individuals directly related to the Kilroy event, one of them the organizer of it, another her good friend and featured speaker at the event, both related to a server which was doing some rather underhanded things. And mysteriously, when I announce my videos coming out, I start getting videos flagged on my account. Really gets that fucking noggin jogging, doesn't it? But I guess I, uh, I'm getting intellectually checkmated here. This is some 4D chess shit. I'm dealing with intellectual giants. Because my IQ is extremely high. <sighs> it is extremely frustrating to not only be an intellectual anomaly myself, which I guess like, you know, 140 is above average or whatever. You know. Most well-known and credentialed scientists of this YouTube community. But apparently that enormous IQ, it just wasn't enough. People began to either pull out or they were pushed out of the event. The list is so goddamn long that you'd have a better chance naming the people that are still coming rather than the ones that dropped out. Tim Poole, Dave Cullen, Faith Goldie, James Alsep, Andrew Torba, Brittany Pettibone, Millennial Woes, Nick Monroe, Andy Worski and Chris, Peter Sweden, Baked Alaska, Lauren Southern. The names go on and on and on. But that's just petty ego. I mean, that's what Monday Matt told me. These people are just too full of themselves. That's the issue. And then, of course, Sargon dropped out. I haven't been following the recent drama with Kilroy too closely, but I'm going to pull out of it anyway. It seems to be mismanaged. I put $250 into it, but I don't expect to get that back. Fucking Sargon of a cod with his goddamn ego issues, huh, Matt? Oh, I'm sorry, what's, what's that? Did you change your position all of a sudden? Matt, is Sargon being a drama whore for pulling out since you said this is mostly an ego <laughs> With Sargon, I'm not too sure. Oh! oh so would I do it? Would I do it? And I have Andy, to... Andy, come on. Wait, Andy, wait, come on. Let me... Quick, somebody send this clip to V. He's always getting accused of being the Sargon of Akkad dick rider. It looks like he's got a little competition for the job. Well, goddamn, that's a lot of people getting kicked out or dropping out. But was it all because of contracts? Was it all because of the non-disclosure agreement and the non-compete that Faith Goldie and Tim Poole talked about? Well, no, there were a whole host of other issues. People were complaining that they weren't getting their emails answered. They were being ignored. We were getting ignored. A lot of the concerns were, get, were getting ignored until it was put in front of the public. Um, well, I and, just, I'm sorry. I really, I, that's not a fair representation. They're not, they weren't being ignored. So I sent an email to, to Base Mama. I say, hi, some weird stuff is going on over there, y'all. What is going on? Oh, my buddy's getting disinvited. We can't talk about what we want to talk about. James now, his picture's gone. What's going on, guys? Fill us this in. And I get a response email that is completely blank from Base Mama's account. So what does that tell me? And I responded back to her. I said, hi, it's just so you know, I got a blank email. Don't know if you intended to write something in it. But indeed, nothing showed up. But that can't be correct, because as you can hear from Sister Danger and Based Mama, the two people that are working on the event, they never forget to respond to an email. They're professionals. And I'm like, dude, I understand. <laughs> like, uh -huh. you don't even have to tell me. Like, I'm at that where, did I miss one? Did I miss one? 
well, you know, you talk to me. I'm like maniacally checking to make sure I didn't accidentally not see somebody's email because I don't want to forget anybody. I agree. Like, I kind of have this general policy of always be the last person to respond, right? That way the ball is never left in your court as having been dropped or whatever. Like, always be the last person to respond. She left my email unanswered. Well, there's got to be more than just a, a few missed emails. Is there anything else going on? Like, say, being lied to about the panels you can do? I had pitched the idea uh, for, for doing a panel on offensive comedy and where the line is and how we present ourselves online. Uh, based Mama uh, uh, declined immediately. Well, there must be a good reason Andy Worski was told he couldn't do a panel on offensive comedy. Like, say, one of Base Mama's associates was already going to do it, and Andy can go fuck himself. Foxy here, <laughs> he hasn't said shit about fuck this whole time, um, <laughs> is going to be on the comedy panel and, and basically discuss, like, how, you know, the restriction of free speech in this offense culture is really kind of hampering comedy, where you just you can't be as free with it as you want to be. How's that dicking feel, Andy? Probably similar to what James Elsop got when he was bent over and hit with this gem. She said my speech on identitarianism was banned because it was a topic that she didn't want to bring up at the conference. This is, of course, contradicted by the fact that listed in the topic sheet she sent me was a speech called The History of Identitarianism in Ireland. I find it funny that there's been kerfuffle from the alt-right side because I won't entertain a panel on identitarian politics. I'll go ahead and tell you. Here's the reason why. And I told everybody this. We don't have time. We don't have the space. It's not on the agenda. Listed in the topic she, she sent me was a speech called The History of Identitarianism in Ireland. It's just a kerfluffle. Come on. Everybody makes mistakes, and the super genius brain trust over here, they fucked up a little bit. But they're innocent fuck-ups. There's no ulterior motive behind any of it. It's not like this is one giant fucking scam that sucked in multiple groups of people. That would be ridiculous. I mean, listen to Andy. He came up with this idea at VidCon. It was our idea. Um, I was one of the initiators of this idea. It was me, Chris, my buddy who I filmed with, um, Failure, yeah, Rucka, and I think, what was his name? A, a Tanuki or Toki or something? Failure? What was his name? It starts with a T. Do you know uh, who I'm talking Tanuki. about? Yeah, well, Tanuki. Okay, okay. Or that's it. It was all of us. And we were all at that shrimp place during VidCon. And we were the ones who were like, oh, we should do our own VidCon where it's like all of us and we can meet, you know, viewers and stuff and talk about whatever we want. And then we were all just hanging out outside and Sister Danger was there. We brought it up to her and she's like, that's a great idea. You know, I've done I've done these things before. And then when she spoke to Based Mama and Dave, they sort of took a hold of that. Well, isn't that wonderful? Based Mama is going to help Andy realize his dream to put on this idea for a convention. But wait a minute, though. That's not what Based Mama told Bunty King. This has been in the works for quite a while. <laughs> so I'm just... How, how long I'm, has this been in the works for, if you mind me asking? About three years. We've been... Three you know, years. Yeah. Three years we've been planning this with, with Dave. No, um, I, I was planning it with Kevin. That's really strange. When I Google VidCon, it shows me that it ran from the 21st to the 25th, and the social media accounts for the Kilroy event went up after VidCon, which would seem to substantiate what Andy Worski is saying. Yet there's Based Mama telling Bunty King this is something she's been working on for three years. Well, that's a bit of an inconsistency. I mean, all she wants to do is help establish this event. Oh, wait, did I say event? I meant business. Most NDAs are indefinite, so I, I put a three-year limit on it because I'm like, well, that's plenty of time to establish our business model and streamline the process so other people can take Kilroy to their cities, you know, and do their thing, and, like, we can help them out with getting contracts and you know, contracting with vendors and venues and doing all this shit. Like, I was like, yeah, that's cool. Like, we had a fucking plan. It wasn't like we just pulled this shit out of our asses. Yeah, let's franchise that fucker out. Hey, let's take it even further. How about some trademarks and copyrights? What we, what we could do is trademark um, our brand for Kilroy slash Kilroy was here. Hell, even throw in a few employment contracts, I mean, NDAs and non-disclosure agreements. These contracts are the same as going to going to employment, not the same. I'm sorry, I'm going to really take that back because I already got raked over the cold. That sounds like a recipe for success. 
but definitely not what Andy Worski and a whole host of other people signing up for this particular event thought when they signed up for it. Ooh, oh, God, I'm getting so sleepy here. I'm just going to stop thinking about it. I don't want my ego to get in the way. Hey, guys, let's go take a nap. Anybody else getting tired? I mean, all that matters at the end of the day is that business loan gets taken care of. So when I go into these places six months ago trying to secure spots, they're like, we want to deposit now. So I took out a loan to put down the deposits. So oh, like, wow. I'm into this shit for like $30,000 already. <laughs> oh, wow, I didn't know that. I don't think well, anybody yeah. knew that. I must have misheard her. I could have sworn she just said that she took those loans out six months ago, which would have been in June, right after VidCon. No, clearly she meant three years ago. Fuck you, Andy Worski. You don't know what you're talking about. I know that look you're giving me. Take the fucking tinfoil hat off. These are all just amazing coincidences. You fucking conspiracy theorist with your crazy shit. I mean, sure, you could look at the timetable and draw some conclusions about what's really going on here and all the lies that we've heard. Or all those other lies. Oh, did I mention all the other lies? Like the lies they told Tim Pool about the contract he was signing? And as I responded to their email, email, I told them it was insulting. To which they responded with an appeal to popularity. Everyone has signed this before you. That's a lie. A lot of the speakers didn't even know this agreement existed. No, they certainly did not sign this before me. Or the whole thing about having to remove people because there just wasn't enough room. I'm sorry, Baked Alaska, we need to trim the fat a little bit. It's too popping off in here for you to stick around. We got too many speakers showing up. And we still have approximately a week's worth of guests that we're going to continue to roll out. And we're still signing people, okay? Then we immediately took Baked Alaska off the website because we were already overbooked, okay? You, you are saying... Tomorrow you have a guest sure. announcement. Yet when picked Alaska, you said that there was a scheduling conflict. Yeah, you guys are overbooked. Already full. And now you're but. still adding people to the roster when you already told people that you were overbooked. No. No. <laughs> That's not a good look. That was a lie that was caught in the very same fucking stream later on. And in other streams too. I'm sure I'm sure I'll put together an email or for you. <laughs> Are all it, the panels already scheduled out with all the people that are coming, or? No, we left. We intentionally left a good chunk open. It's so weird. It feels like everything about this event might be completely fucking fake. And it only gets worse if you look at the timetable. When Dave Cullen put up the initial fundraising video for the Kilroy event on November 16, it only took a matter of three weeks for them to hit the official goal of $85,000. That's fucking impressive. That is a lot of money. December 6th, we've raised all the money we need. And that's just the amount listed up on the website. We're not even talking about PayPal here. Um, you can pledge anonymously without buying a ticket. You can give any amount that you want. I mean, it's not a big deal. Like, I got to tell you, I, I appreciate everybody who's buying tickets, but I appreciate more people who can't be there that are still supporting it. Like, that's, to me, that's so awesome. So you've got all these big YouTubers from a diverse group of people that are bringing in all this audience for you. And all these people are paying enormous amounts of money to meet people they want to see in real life. If you look at the rewards on the website, that's clearly listed. And yet, strangely, so very strangely, a majority of people start to run into issues. It starts with Baked Alaska, who was up on the website for a day or two. Just long enough for his followers to donate money, but not long enough for him to figure out what the fuck is going on. Let me clue you in, Baked. You got used like a puppet. Just like everybody in this situation got fucked over. You've all been bamboozled. You are a nice shiny object to wave out in front of retards to get the money to come in. And then once the money came in, suddenly we have issues. Panels aren't showing up. Emails aren't going out. Ridiculous contracts are being forced on people. It's almost like they wanted to use YouTubers for marketing. This is a very important concern <laughs> right here. Is um, A lot of the, uh, of the donations were made under the promise that uh, under the promises that certain guests would be appearing uh and you put the, the guest list up there and people saw who were who, who was on that list and donated to see certain people and then as people start pulling out and as as you know all these complications are happening doesn't it seem like the donations and the event itself was made under a you know false promotion i wanted to put people up for the crowdfunder that people kind of knew you know like they could see them and knew who they were um just as part of the marketing and then i didn't 
I didn't, I didn't go out of my way to show that there were academics who were actually attending that we're going to be talking about other things, not on YouTube, not internet celebrities or whatever. So we've got like a reward system in the works and, and meeting up with people is going to be one of the, uh, one of the rewards. So they could fund academics who weren't as popular. I'm trying to be amenable to them as much as I can, but they're not really that big and they're not really that influential, especially when we're, we're courting like academics, like actual academics, not pretend YouTube academics. Like we're actually going for people who are actually like researching in these fields and making progress in, in these areas and actually like working for this. Well, don't make so them I'm not like super fire concerned fire. about it because yeah. that's, well, the, the problem is, like I said, I think my, the biggest mistake I made was not making it clear that this is not a YouTube convention. And no. a lot of, like, we can't list a lot of people that are on there that are very left-leaning because they're a fucking security risk. That's why I open called. I didn't want just people who are YouTube famous. YouTube famous, internet famous, that doesn't mean anything. To well, the only thing that could make this shit show worse if there was a political angle on it. I mean, we fucked over YouTubers and built their audience for money. But could we fuck over political opponents just for the fun of it? Well, I think we could if we follow a few steps. Now, if you remember Kraut Server with all his magnificent 24-hour ops like Purple Starfish or whatever the fuck he called this dumb shit, Based Mama was in there. She was right in that fucking server. And in that server, there was a hit list. And surprisingly, a good amount of the people on that hit list were signed up to show up at the event. People like James Alsip, Baked Alaska, Lauren Southern. These people and their audiences donated money or bought tickets. They were used to help promote this. I wonder if she has any political opinions on these people. Okay, first of all, there's about 70% of the people on there that I don't politically align with, and there's a couple of them, I won't name names, that I actually do not like as a person. Because I think it'll be great to kind of bring social justice back to where it's supposed to fucking be. Yeah, I agree. I agree. <laughs> Girl power. Let's bring social justice back to where it needs to be. Fuck those white nationalists. But don't fuck their money. We need their money. We have a $30,000 business loan to pay off and trademarks to apply for. Well, Jim, that doesn't prove any malice on her part. Well, as she said, she is Kilroy. Because at the end of the day, Kilroy is just me. And the Kilroy social media page that's up only has like 130 tweets. So it's really weird then, isn't it, that a social media account used to promote a free speech event would be retweeting Kraut and T advertising his dirty trick server. If she's calling the shots, and this is her event, and her event is officially promoting him by retweeting him on their official fucking account, raises a few questions, doesn't it? It's a twofer, really. You get a bunch of gullible YouTubers to promote your event, which you let them think is actually their event, but you have no real intention of ever letting them show up and speak. Now, you go about this by a myriad of different ways, by making panels inaccessible, losing emails, creating contracts which are just purely ridiculous in the hopes that it will drive them away or anger them. To make room for all those top-tier intellectual academics that you've always dreamed of gathering together in one place to have 48 panels on Muslim this and Muslim that. And you also get to take all this money from right-wing sources which you disagree with, people you find abhorrent, and then basically just throw them off the website. Kick them off, remove their name, it doesn't matter, you've already got the cash. Sometime last week I was dropped from the Kilroy speakers list without notice. That's how you know you're dealing with true professionals. Seems pretty cut and dry to me. For that three-week period of fundraising, there weren't contracts sent out. There weren't NDAs discussed. Everybody seemed to be taken by surprise at the very end, after the money was gathered. Then, once the money was in that bank account, suddenly we have issues. Suddenly we need to clear some room, make some space for the important people, not you fucking YouTubers. You don't matter. But hey, you've still got things to look forward to at Kilroy. I mean, sure... Sargon's not going to be in the ball pit. That's a bit disheartening. I think we all really wanted to see him just swimming around in his natural environment, but sadly that's just not going to happen. But at least he can show up for the fights. The good old fisticuffs. I'm talking Jeff Holiday throwing down with Coach Red Pill. Can you, can you just not be a pussy about it? You know something? I'm going to go to the Kilroy event. Okay, good. Come to the Kilroy event. I'm going to go to the Kilroy event, and I'm going to look you up. When, when you find me at Kilroy, that you were just saying, Coach, that you're going to come find me at Kilroy, what are you going to do when you find me? You're going to give me a big old sloppy kiss? Mm -hmm. You'd love that, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah. I love older men. So what are you going to do? You're saying you're going to come and you're going to find me at Kilroy. What are you going to do? We're going to have a chat. You're going to buy me a burger? 
you'll be talking, but I won't be talking much, probably. Okay. So you're gonna you're gonna patiently sit there and you're gonna listen and and absorb everything that I have to say, and that'd be great. Cool. Sounds good. Is that it? Is that all you're gonna do when you when you come to Kilroy, man? Or Johnny Fox taking on Monday Matt. Here's the thing. I, I, know. I, thought, I thought this, like, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Johnny, you want to have this conversation in person, dude? I'm all for it. Get your ass to oh, Phoenix in fucking I'm April. For right, whether you're going to Kilroy One or Kilroy Two, I whatever he's know, making. He Why don't you come on out? Why don't you come on out? Come on out. Well, I'm a good come on out, sir. Well, that is my good. that's my suggestion. Come on out. Come on out. Come on, let's have a conversation. Come on. Get on that plane, Johnny. Get on that iron horse. Get your ass out of Phoenix. Come on. That sounds like some good old fun. Who doesn't want to watch people beat the shit out of each other? This sounds like a fantastic event. And hopefully, Kilroy's a great success for them because they're going to need the money, you know, with breaking the law and all. Oh, did I did I forget to mention that part? You know that three-week crowdfunder they had where they had a ton of people's names up, raising money to show up at the event, and how they sent contracts out after that, after December 6th, after the money had been raised? Turns out that might have been completely fucking illegal. Don't take my word for it. Ask Based Mama. But then I got a second problem, which I found out the other day, is I can't advertise people that I don't have signed on to speak. Yeah. Because that would be violating false advertising laws in Arizona. So if I'm understanding this right, she's basically admitting that she illicitly raised $85,000. Brilliant. That is 140 IQ, ladies and gentlemen. Because my IQ is extremely high. <gasps> it is extremely frustrating to not only be an intellectual anomaly myself, which I guess like, you know, 140 is above average or whatever, 